So we're going to take a look at making your first recording in Logic today. And in this particular case, we need to create a new project. Once you open Logic, just go ahead and hit Command N to start a new project. And you should get a dialog like this. Choose default button. Choose a project. Create an empty project. And we want to create an empty project, which is what is set to by default. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit the choose button. Not one in new track dialog one content selected edit text number of tracks and this dialog is asking us not only how many tracks do we want in our empty project but then what type of tracks so if i jump to the top of this window with vo home software instrument selected radio button one of six you'll see software instrument is selected by default but you could also choose audio radio button audio track drummer radio button three of six or a drummer track and so on and so forth. So I'm going to jump to the bottom of this window and just click create. create default button. Dialog, dialog, four, window, untitled, tracks, closing dialog. All right. And so now we have our new project open with just a single software instrument track in it. I'm going to full screen this window first. Library, control bar, toolbar, control bar, toolbar, untitled, full screen, button. Press full screen, but space with Logic Pro 10 containing window untitled, tracks, full screen space, Logic Pro 10 has new window. I like to full screen my Logic window because when you're looking at certain things, it allows it to read properly with voiceover. All right, so now that we got this open, we need to find a tracks area. Inspector, group, tracks, group. There we go, and if we interact with this. In tracks, group, two items, tracks, toolbar. There's a track toolbar. Tracks, group. And then just the tracks group, plus interact with the tracks group, and we're looking for a tracks header. In tracks, group. Four items, tracks legend, groove, tracks time ruler, timeline, tracks header, groove. All right, tracks header, there we go, we interact with this. In tracks header, groove, track one, classic electric piano, groove. Classic electric piano, so that's the first and only track in our project. Track one, track one, classic electric piano, groove. You see, I just tried to navigate and there's nowhere else to go. All right, so if you want to record on this track or hear what this classic electric piano sounds like, you can just start playing on your MIDI keyboard. If you got your MIDI keyboard not plugged in yet, then go ahead and plug it in now. If it doesn't require drivers, it should just work and you can start playing this instrument. If it does require drivers, you'll have to quit Logic, install the drivers, and then relaunch Logic. And once again, it should just start working. I don't have a MIDI keyboard plugged in myself right now, so I'm gonna use musical typing keyboard. Musical typing keyboard allows us to use the regular typing keyboard as a MIDI keyboard and you can launch it by just pressing command K. Musical typing, classic electric piano, dialog. And when you have the musical typing keyboard up, ASDF home row is your white keys on the piano and the keys above it, WE, etc, 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 become your black keys. And if you want to go down an octave, that's Z. And if you want to go up an octave, that would be X. So if I hit this twice, you see that's an octave above where we started. So if I hit Z one more time, I'm back to the octave range that we started in. And in the musical typing keyboard, because there isn't a black key that falls on Q or R, you can still use Q to quantize and R to start recording. Um, much like you can when the musical typing keyboard isn't up. However, if you try to turn a metronome on and off, the keyboard command for that is K, you'll see that you are going to trigger whatever key is on K. So you do have to temporarily dismiss the musical typing keyboard with command K to turn the metronome on or off. All right, so by default in Logic, the metronome will count you win for one measure. So if I were to press R right now, it will count me in for one measure and then start recording me. One bar, one beat, one division, one tick. And you just hit the space bar to stop recording. And now if you hit space. One bar, one beat, one division, one tick. One bar, one beat, one division, one tick. One bar, one beat, one division, one tick. And you can hit Q to quantize that. Because uh, as you see, it's chopping off my first note there. Quantize selected events. Now if I hit space. One bar, one beat, one division, one tick. Now that is a little out of time. So if you want to play along with the metronome, you can do that. And you'll have to go to the record menu. So I'm going to press VOM to get to the menus and then navigate over to the record menu. Menu bar, Apple. Record. I just press R to jump to record menu. And now if I navigate down this menu, metronome settings should be one of them. Record, menu 10 item, count in, submenu. 
and counting. That submenu will let you change the counting. By default, it's set to a one measure counting. But if you want to change the counting, counting submenu 16 items non. You can open the submenu. Check mark one bar, two bars, three bars, and select the appropriate option right there. So I'm going to go back to the main menu. Record menu metronome settings ellipsis. Metronome settings. That's what we're looking for. And if we'll view it based on this. Metronome settings. Untitled. Project settings. Dialog. Untitled. Project settings. Dialog. Untitled. Project settings. Options. Source. All right. MIDI click. All right. Be quiet. Options. Simple mode. Check. Checkbox. So we want to turn off simple mode. So I'm going to uncheck that. Uncheck. Simple mode. Checkbox. Click while recording. Check. Checkbox. We want click while recording, yes. Only during count in. Uncheck. Checkbox. If you don't want it to give you a metronome during recording and only during counting, then you want to check this and uncheck click while recording. Click while playing. Uncheck. Checkbox. And if you want it to also give you the metronome while you're playing back what you recorded, you can check that. But this works for us, so I'm just going to close out of this window now. Now in. Untitled. Tracks. Window. Track one classic electric piano. Groove. And now when I hit record you should hear the metronome click while I'm recording, and that should keep me in time a little bit better. So I'm going to press Command-K to bring the musical typing keyboard again. Oops. I guess it was already up. So I'm going to press Command-K to bring up the musical typing keyboard again. Musical typing. Classic electric piano. Dialogue. There we go. Undo. Undo that recording. All right, so I'm going to hit R to start recording, and it will count us in for a measure, and then we can start playing. There we go. One bar, one beat, one division, right. one tick. There we go. We got that recorded. So if we hit space to play that back, one bar, you see one beat, one it's still cutting off that first note. So I'm going to hit Q to quantize that. Oops. Let's try that again. Quantize selected events. And now I'm going to hit space. One bar, one beat, one so I'm using a Bluetooth keyboard, so it's a little latent. Use the laptop keyboard or plug in a keyboard over USB. All right, so let's jump over to um, looking at the library. So I'm going to close this musical typing keyboard with Command K. Track one classic electric piano, group. And now let's say we want to change this to a different piano sound. So I'm going to stop interacting with this and go to the library. Out of tracks, out of tracks, group. Out of tracks. All right. Well, now that we've stopped interacting out of the tracks area altogether, if we navigate with your left arrow, inspector, group. there's the inspector. Library, group. And there's the library. If the library is not visible, you can press the letter Y to toggle it on, and that will bring it into view. All right. So let's interact with the library. In library, group. Eight items. Classic electric piano. And we're going to navigate to the library browser. Horizontal splitter. Search sounds. Search text field. Blank. Library. Browser. There we go. So if we interact with the browser, we'll see the different categories in here. In library. Browser. Vintage electric piano. Column one of two. Vintage electric piano. 14 of 18. And you can just use VO down arrow to navigate through this. Drum kit. Electronic drum kit. Guitar. Mallet. Orchestral. Percussion. Piano. So there we have piano. So let's see what's in the piano section. Bosendorfer Grand Piano. Column two of two. And once you have a patch selected in a library, you can just hit space to hear what it sounds like with what you already have recorded. One bar, one beat, one there division, one tick. And there's a couple different ones in here. Grand piano and pad. Grand piano and strings. So these are uh, patches that already have splits in place. So if you want to set up a split, you can use these patches as a starting point and then customize it to which two instruments you want. Grand Piano with Pad and Choir. Piano and Upright Bass. Steinway Grand Piano. There's a Steinway Grand Piano. Let's hear this one. One bar, one beat, one division, and one tick. And we have... Yamaha Grand Piano. Have a Yamaha Grand Piano. One bar, one beat, right. one division, one tick. So I'm going to go back to the Steinway for now. Steinway Grand Piano. And I'm going to stop interacting with this and go back to the track header. Out of out of tracks, group. Tracks, group. In tracks, tracks, group. In tra tracks, time, tracks, header, group. In tracks, header, group. Track one, Steinway Grand Piano, group. There we go. So I just use VO right arrow to navigate, interact, and navigate to the track header. So we're back in the track header. Track one, Steinway Grand Piano, group. And you see we have the Steinway Grand Piano. Now, 
let's say that we want to add a second instrument here. So I'm going to do Command Option F to add a second software instrument track to our project. Track to classic electric piano group. And you see by default, once again, it's a classic electric piano. Now let's say I want to change this to a bass. So first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go copy and paste what I just played onto this track. So I'm going to go back to the Steinway track. Track one Steinway Grand Piano Group. And by default, it will select all the regions on this track. So I'm just going to do Command C. Copy. And now I'm going to make sure we're at the beginning of the project with the return key. One bar, one beat, one division, one tick. Track two, classic electric piano group. And if I paste this here, paste. You'll see that now. If I play this, we'll have a Steinway and a classic electric piano. One bar, one beat, one division, one tick. One bar, one beat, one all division, right. one tick. That's not very useful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift this all down an octave. So I'm going to do that in the event list. So if I do Command-7, it will open the event list. Now in, untitled, classic electric piano, untitled, event list, window, leave folder, button. And if I jump into the event list with VOJ. In table, column 1, row 1 empty cell, column 2, row 1 empty cell, 1, 1, 1. I'm going to stop that from talking. So we can navigate through this. M, column 2, row 1 empty cell, position, 1, 1, 1, 1, scrubber groove, column 3, row 1. You see that shows the position of the notes. Status, note cell, column CH, 1 slider, column 5, nom, C2 slider, column 6, row that 1. That shows the note value. Val, 98 slider, column 7, row 1. That shows the velocity. Length info, 0, 1, 3, 15, scrubber groove, column 8, row 1. And that shows the length of the note. So I'm going to go back to the note value. Cal, num, C2 slider, column 6, row 1. And the cool thing about the event list is if you do option up and down arrow, Eight item selected. you can change the pitch up or down a semitone. Eight item selected. And if you do shift option up or down arrow, Eight item selected. you can change the pitch up or down Eight item selected. an octave. So I'm going to select all of these with command A. Select all. And I'm going to take them down an octave with command shift down arrow. 120 items selected. And now I'm going to close this. Tracks group. Tracks group. And I'm going to go back into the library and find a bass sound. Out of track. Inspector group. Library group. All right. We just VO right arrow till we found a library after we stopped interacting out of the tracks groups altogether. I'm going to interact with the library. In library group. Horizontal splitter. Search sounds. Search text field. Blank. And if you want, you can search for something like bass right here, and it will only show bass in the library browser. B A S S. And Ace. if I press B O J now. Logic Pro in table. Row one of one hundred fifty-five. Name. Eighties FM bass attack. Date. September twenty-six, two thousand nineteen at ten ten p.m. You see, it takes me right into that library browser, and now I can just view up or down arrow through here to select a bass. Name. Acid edge bass. Acid House Bass. Agile Synth Bass. You see, there's a lot of synth basses in here. Analog Bass Sequence. Analog Bass Twister. I'm looking... Arcade Attack Bass. For something that's not a synth bass. Bass Destroyer. Bass Organ. Bass Patterns. Bass Talk. And you can hear any of these patches, by the way, by just hitting space. <laughs> one bar, one beat, one division, one tip. <laughs> As you can tell, that doesn't work very well. Base wave cycles. I'm going to jump to the bottom of this list with VO end. Date, September 26. Name, Zap Base. And now I'm going to VO up arrow. Wobble Grinder Base. Wobble Fade Base. Wobble Buzz Base. Waves Motion Base. Vowel Base. Voice Base. Vintage Synth Base. Vintage Grassy Base. Vibes and Base. Velo Techno Base. Upright Studio Base. There we go. Upright studio bass. I was looking for some kind of upright because I figured that would work well with the piano. One bar, one beat, one division, one tick. Let's see what else we have in here for uprights. Upright ballad bass. Four beats, four divisions, 137 ticks. One bar, one beat, one division, one tick. See what else is in here. Upright baby bass. There we go. One bar, one beat, right. one division, one so, tick. You kind of get the idea of how you can create tracks and find patches and change the pitch and octave of some of the stuff that you have played. So hopefully you find this helpful. 
Now, if you want to save it, you can press Command S to save. Project logics, content selected, save as, edit text, save, save as, tags, where? You can give this a name. I'm going to name this first MIDI recording. Selection, I, R, S, T, M, I, D, I, R, E, O, R, D, I, N, G. First MIDI recording. Now let's continue to navigate through this window. Tags, tags, to where? Logic, where? Pop-up button. Save it in your logic folder inside of your home folder. Show more options. Collab. Copy the following files into your project. All right. So this allows you to select what files get saved when you save your project. And let's see what's here. Audio files. Check. Checkbox. So you generally want to check that. That way, anything you record as an audio file will get saved in the project. But MIDI files should be saved automatically by default. EXS instruments and samples. Uncheck. Checkbox. And you don't really need to worry about the rest of these because if you're going to open up this in another copy of Logic, all this stuff is going to be there for you already. Alchemy audio data. Check. Checkbox. Ultra beat samples. Uncheck. Check. Space designer impulse re movie file. Uncheck. Include Apple sound library content. Uncheck. Organize my project as A. Now, this part, organize my project as A, gives you two options. Package. Selected. Radio button. One of two. <laughs> Choosing package will basically save your project as a single file with everything already included in it. And then the other option is folder. Folder, radio button, two of two. And if we save it as a folder, it will create a new folder with the name of the project and there'll be a dot logic file in there with the name of the project. And then there'll be a separate folder for your audio files and all that stuff. Now, the thing is, if you save it as a package, it only shows up as a single file in Finder, but you can right click on that file, show package contents, and you'll be able to see basically what it would look like if you save it as a folder. I personally prefer to save it as a package file because that means that you just have one file to worry about if you want to back it up somewhere, if you want to share it with someone, you know, put it in Dropbox or send someone a link to it or, you know, share it via iCloud Drive, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you just have one file to worry about. But then if you need to see the contents of it, you can VO Shift M on that file and go to show package contents and you'll see everything as if you saved it as a folder so i'm going to make sure package is selected here package selected radio button one of two and that's the option i recommend going with so now we can just go select okay folder radio cancel but save button save button save that's what we're looking for so if we view space on this it will save it for you all right that's pretty much it for this tutorial hopefully that helped you get up and running with making your first recording and understanding some basics of logic. If there's anything you'd like me to cover in a future tutorial, please feel free to share that in the comments, along with any tips or tricks that you may have that you want to share with the community as well. Thanks for watching.